вы всегда видите лишь последний кадр, играя роли в чужом кино. Все тайное становится явным. Здравствуйте. Greetings. In a new year, the newspaper unsolved crimes expert opinion section. I have a good mood. I'll explain why our appreciated viewers. This is the first program and with this serious, Odessa way type of humor. Actually, the subject matter is serious enough. It is about what type of information is to be trusted and what type isn't to be. So, let's put first things first. I am sitting in front of a computer for a reason. In front of me, there is a new sect named ASPN. Presumably, you have already heard of it somewhere, quite entertaining. So it is titled as Near the Association of Self-Discovery. It is published on the Apologetic Center of Irenaeus. Let me tell you in few words about how it got there. The fact is that me and chief editor of Unsolved Crimes Konstantin Slobodinyuk began looking into the problem of apologetic centers. We will talk about them in detail. Such apologetic centers exist in Ukraine as well as in Russia. And they are highly noted by mass media. For this reason, we will talk about media separately. Particularly about Russian and Odessa media as they have become somewhat identical. That is, there is no city in Ukraine whose information policy is structured in such a way that it exploits, I would say, a notion of sectarianism and intimidation of people, as in Russian Federation and in the city of Odessa here. It is kind of strange situation, since Ukraine is not Russia. Odessa, I would say a Ukrainian city, which does not have any relation to Russia. But the thing is that some journalists, not all, of Russian Federation and Odessa do exploit this sect cult, intimidating the population by the sects with a reference to apologetic information centers, with a reference to some citizens' information, who are oftentimes adherents of a certain church, for instance, ROC, Moscow Patriarchate. And in general, those people are deeply psychiatrically ill. They are in a state of strong mental disturbance. Therefore, the information they deliver, let's put it mildly for now, is a distorted one. Well, let's start from the very beginning. So here is the ASPN, near the Association of Self-Discovery, is ultimate result of Unsolved Crimes chief editor Konstantin Slobodinyuk's imagination. He is the one who created this sect. You have to be aware of that. And this is why we are displaying it. Today we will be creating a virtual cult. The task is a simple one. It is an Irenaea Center objectivity test. That is, if we create a virtual non-existent sect with non-existent adherents, with a non-existent guru that we made up in here, and if the Irenaeus Center will accept it and post it on their site, then the assumption regarding its non-objectivity will be confirmed. So now, we get into maximally imaginative mode, start recalling the way the worst sects on Earth look like, and let's come up with a compiled representation. But how it ended up in the center of Irenea all the way from Odessa? I'll tell you how. Konstantin Slobodinuk looked into the way of how the apologetic centers work, how it is sort of related to each other Odessa and Russian Federation press works. 
And quite simply, several of his employees got on the World Wide Web and they effortlessly invented a sect. And wrote about it in the web. Let's say it was some kind of information work. And oh, the sect is on Irenaeus Center website. No one ever saw an adherent of this sect. I mean, there are no adherents as such. No one has ever seen this very sect nor its location. But the center of Irenaeus, as other apologetic centers, and Odessa mass media, in the face of some omnivorous journalists, are up to replicate here and there no matter what you show them regarding sects. They are at the ready to place this information in the apologetic centers and to make programs about people telling what the sectarians are. As you know, some time ago, me and Konstantin Vladimirovich made a program about slave trade and how we see the professionals, experts in the sphere related to struggle against crimes say that it is very exaggerated topic. It does exist, but the way it is presented to us, as you know, does not fit reality, in the same way with sex. Aren't there any sects? Most probably they do exist. I, as a lawyer, cannot say that they exist, because there is no definition as such in law. What is not in law does not exist for me. You would say, Oleg Viktorovich, but the moon is not indicated in law. My answer is absolutely true. The moon is not in the law. Well, but it exists. We can actually see. I say absolutely true. You confuse. You confuse the concepts. When we say sect, it is a thing that goes beyond the social norms defined from the point of view of the ones who label titles to numerous organizations. As for the moon, it is an objective heavenly body that has been studied by astronomers and so forth. So when we come up with our own definitions, concepts, disregarding legal norms, regulating relationships among people and society, this is what, in my view as a lawyer, mustn't be allowed. I mean, one comes up with some kind of a sect whose objective is to harm people. At one time, pardon me for my expression, the same misdoer was a pyramid. During my business consultations, people were afraid of the word pyramid. They say that pyramid is bad, that they will get cheated or influenced somehow. I told them, you guys are not afraid of the word pyramid. They say, why? No, we are afraid and so forth. No, you are not afraid of the word, but of the consequences. Well, when you visit Egypt and look at the pyramids, are you afraid of them? Stop telling nonsense. You are afraid of some consequences that would be uncontrollable and so forth. So let's look at things objectively. So before the misdoer was a pyramid. When the pyramid had disappeared, we have a new misdoer, the sect. You know what I mean? That is, in a society there is always some kind of misdoer, and for them to exist there must be a certain organization. Journalistic, informatory, that would be intimidating people with this misdoers. So we are here to find out for what reason people have to be intimidated? So what does it mean to intimidate? It is to provide people misleading information, which, so to speak, would disorganize them and to get self-interest from it. That's the meaning of intimidation. So when we had been preparing this sect, the Near the Association of Self-Discovery, we were absolutely sure 
that, uh, pardon me for my expression, that apologetic centers are omnivorous, that apologetic centers are omnivorous, that certain journalists engaged in this process are omnivorous, and there is a clear-cut implication that any person who knows all of these mechanisms can come up with any cult. And related to a certain person, no matter who is it, a businessman, a public figure, a citizen of Ukraine, and thus defame him by relating him to that sect which is an Irenaeus center in Russia or on any other site of apologetic centers. Dear Center of Irenaeus, we have came up with not only one cult on your site, there are several of them. Try to guess them. This is your homework that you need to do. We as journalists can tell that you have problems with your personnel. They are not able to work with information, but they did learn how to inflict harm on own people and people of other countries. When people are engaged in this kind of dirt, and this is a dirt and you are well aware of it, why are they doing this? Such kind of things are not done just because. No one contributes and pays them money. Even though there is a good deal of people who can work for free, for instance, monks. But still, I for one think that journalists do us money, especially those that you engage in Odessa and in Russia, which are indirectly interconnected. By the way, this is an engaging topic. Maybe one of the journalists will look into it, or we will take a look at it in the near future in order to understand the way journalists in Odessa are related to ones in Russia, within the framework of cults, and why particularly in Odessa there is this hysteria about sectarianism, as I, for one, do not see them in Odessa. Actually, I think that they don't exist at all as there's nothing like a sect in a law system. But if people are saying that there are such, let's then look into the issue of apologetic centers, self-interested correspondents and other comrades who are creating this misdeus in Ukraine. The way we dispelled the myths in the program about slave trade, in the same way we are planning to do one about sects, and we are planning to make entire series of them. So let's take a look at what to be believed in and what not. There is a question that comes up, who does need all this? Probably there are interested subjects. You would ask why interested parties need it. And I'll tell you why. It can be also used for exclusion of the rivals. I mean, there are many reasons to have such kind of informational structure. Many reasons. In order to eliminate, disorganize, stop the activity or to destroy a certain subject, these kind of structures are very suitable. You would say, well, there is a law regarding media, the law, law, law. You are right, our dear viewers. Exactly, we have the law, law, law. We have the law. But for the apologetic center and especially trained correspondents, it does not relate. Now I'll explain why. The thing is that the apologetic centers are not an entity. You might wonder what means not. You may easily check out my words. Apologetic centers are nothing more than a page or a site in the internet. They have no legal address, no people responsible for it. As to say, no legal entity or state registration, 
is over there. It's just an information portal. In a similar way, in the city of Odessa, there are sites of mass media, where it is written site instead of a newspaper. Information portal instead of the mass media with the name of legal person and official state registration. You must understand why it is done in such a way. This type of structures do not want to bear any responsibility. It is done not to respond so that no law can be initiated against them. Just imagine a portal in the Internet, for example, newspaper Tverskaya. So what? You look in the media registry, there is no such an agency. You start looking into sending a attorney request, and there is no such an entity. It does not exist. Then what? And then nothing. Everyone will be reading this information, and no one will be a responsibility for it. As you understand, this kind of structure has its architect. That is a man who designed it. As you understand, it could not be done without lawyers. These people consulted lawyers beforehand in order not to bear any responsibility. Lawyers recommended them not to register as an official mass media in order not to be responsible for the actions they will carry out. That is why apologetic centers and press houses, which are not listed in the registry, in other words, they do not exist. They are structured in the same way. In other words, certain architects had projected them in a similar way. That is, it's an online portal with something written on it, branded in the web while not being related to mass media whatsoever. In Odessa, there is more than one online portal. You should be aware of it. That is, any information typed up on these sites, news, opinion regarding subjects, is by and all very questionable information. So what is the reason of such disputability? Because this kind of information is not being provided by an official mass media channel. The purpose of spreading it, as you understand, is a discreditation of legal entities, subjects and so forth, reporting to a certain constituency where are people standing behind this kind of structure. If you are willing to believe any structure which bears no responsibility to anyone, you will be disinformed. Why it is so? The fact is that this kind of portals, organizations and information blocks on the Internet not only have architects, but they also have their owners, and they distinctly guide on a daily basis about what has to be on these sites. So, you get subjective information which does not meet the reality. But uh, then you may say that, well, there is no other available information. I will tell you something even worse. There are information portals that name themselves in the way they would like the official media to be called, where one can find quite objective information here. So these portals are trying to get reputation, and they have only one objective. That is to spread this information, since you will observe any information as you did the objective ones.
This kind of information organizations try to get people accustomed to it. They seem to be covering news, reportages, objectively, even if they formally do not exist. And this kind of portals are actually located in web with certain titles. They make you used to get in the habit of thinking that this portal, in principle, is quite objective and interesting. Such so-called news agencies cover general news, for instance, city news, and when they need a certain news to get public, they put it up and it is fake. However, you are already accustomed to it as it provides basically all needed general topics and the content of them is not actually so malignant. Respectively, you will definitely accept falsified information without knowing that it is so, so you should understand it. When we mention certain kinds of organizations that are inclined to misinform public, we say that there is someone who needs this for sure. Look at now, one who knows how to work well with information can make any sectarian. Slobodinyuk demonstrated it at live. Should be pointed out, apologetic center of Irenaeus, that we have revealed only one sect, which was planted by journalists. This was done to demonstrate your absolute incompetency and absolute and complete subjectivity of your side. But the most important thing is that it terribly hurts professional business climate and harms people whom you disinform. People who are infamous for their thick-headedness and who implicitly believe you because allegedly you are the one who serves the God. But to be honest, I don't see any excerpt servant other than a golden calf. By misusing your authority, authority of church, you specifically on purpose misinform your people about certain type of organization activities related to certain people and show them as hell devils for business partners, thus committing a criminal activity, which is called a disorganization in terms of special services language, termination of subject activity, a diversion. It is very unfortunate that you demonstrate it every day. So-called immorality, lack of spirituality, unwillingness to follow the gospel, unwillingness to live properly. Certainly not all. There are some people who do this church advocacy. But main point should be kept in mind regarding apologetic center and they are as following. This type of structure does not have any kind of form. It's just a contact group, just a website, just a structure displayed on your computer screen. And you will never get across with people who are really over there. Once one man told me the following, Hello Victor, so I did call Apologetic Center and they even have a phone number. I said yes, absolutely true. My lawyers had also repeatedly phoned Apologetic Centers of Christian Orthodox Church. And all they heard was them putting up information about sex. If tomorrow I'll make up a call in a reportage from and ask it to place it in the apologetic center, they will be happy to do it. Even without figuring out whether it is true, or is it me, some son of Slobodinu created thing over a cup of tea with two cameras, quickly made video and gave them the next day. Apologetic centers don't even wish to look into if such organization exists. Whether such a leader of the cult existing or non-existent, are there any premises to consider a particular organization of a sect? I mean, no one cares about these matters. Things just get posted. As we see, there were certain misdoers who were called pyramids. Later came others called sects. 
After this sex, propaganda finishes, and a new type of mystery will be created. And unethical mass media and other organizations as apologetic centers will keep on intimidating people. Ask yourself ten times why a journalist would talk about somewhat sex. Why would he be trying to oppose it? Oppose windmills that do not exist. If it is an organized criminal group, let law enforcement agencies deal with it. If there is an organized group which has self-interest, most people do not even think about things like this, even though it has to be. Until we meet again.